What's up guys, Alex from FIFA Scouting Tips here and welcome to Season 2 Episode 6 of Pompey Youth Stars. Just want to say a big, big thank you to everyone who entered the recent Scouting God Contest. Uh, there were some absolutely fantastic entries, really, really fast players, just blew my mind looking at some of these players. So well done to everyone who entered that. Uh, next month's contest is going to be on best 16 year old players, so they can be any position as long as they are 16 years old. So uh, all the details for entering that contest will be at the end of the video, so make sure you stick around for that. Uh, up next we have a match against Leeds. I'm going to be playing this game because uh, they are quite a good team. They're sort of um, they're promotion rivals along with me. Uh, but just before we get started, we have a message here and it's from Brad Knight saying he has accepted his contract. It's really good news getting him on board. So without further ado, let's get on with this match against Leeds United. This was a game full of terrible refereeing decisions. That one apparently a foul. I certainly didn't see anything wrong with that. But I got drawn back when I was on the break. Uh, but nevertheless, we got over that and came on the attack. East rasping in a shot, uh, parried from the goalkeeper. So we made a fairly bright start uh, coming out on the attack. But again, another terrible decision here. Look at this. There's a foul in here somewhere. Not for that, but it was in the corner. Apparently there was a foul there. I certainly didn't see that one either. So I kept getting dragged back for these fouls that weren't fouls. But it didn't matter because shortly after we came on the, on the break. Uh, capitalised on a mistake in the defence and Lodigan slotting it into the corner. So it was 1-0. At this point it was a really, really even game. Um, both teams doing fairly well, uh, but no one really able to find the breakthrough. I think that was the first shot of the match. Uh, so I was pretty glad to be able to get through and uh, go 1-0 up at this point. Uh, despite all the uh, terrible decisions that were going against me. So I knew it was going to be a tough game, so any uh, attempts on goal were going to be valuable. But Leeds came straight back after that with their own attack. It was only a last ditch tackle from East which prevented them from getting their shot on target. So that was pretty good. It went in at half time, 1 0 up. As you can see from the stats, the possession was really even. Shots on target, very even. Total shots, very even. Uh, so it was only the one goal separating us. Uh, so it could really have gone either way this half. Um, like I said, a very tough team. I was only 1-0 up, so it was going to be a close game. Uh, they had the first uh, chance in the second half. Again, another awful decision. That was clearly a great tackle. Won the ball, but the ref said it was a foul. And just to add insult to injury, this happened. Goalkeeper was absolutely nowhere. Really late decision to dive for the ball, and then he ended up missing it. If you look from here, it wasn't even a particularly great free kick, but he left it so late to dive that it was already past him by the time he started moving. And so that, uh, that mistaken goal meant that we were 1-0. And I, I felt really hard done by at this point because I didn't feel like I was deserving to uh, lose a goal there. But then we had the uh, the customary bomb getting hacked. It seems to be happening every single game. Uh, he got taken out right on the edge of the box. So this was a great opportunity for us to come back. Paul is striking it against the crossbar. Goalkeeper could do nothing. Only could watch. Uh, so that was a, a really good chance to get back in the game. But we didn't manage to take it. Another chance fell our way. But poor communication meant the pass went astray. Uh, which is a bit frustrating, but then we came again straight after. Uh, this time I was hoping to make amends, but but for the world's fastest 32-year-old defender, not only catching up with Bong, but overtaking him and blocking his shot. Uh, Leeds weren't done though, right near the death, a fantastic stop from Doherty, he redeemed himself there, but what, what followed was complete chaos, heading the ball straight back into the box, a goal line clearance, heading it back to the striker again, and then another goal line clearance before I eventually hacked it clear. That would have been so frustrating to lose a goal in those circumstances, uh, but we weren't finished. We managed to give away a, stu a stupid free kick, uh, which they then whipped into the box. It was a pretty tame header in the end, but it almost looked like Doherty was going to misjudge it. That would have been even more frustrating to lose it like that. And at least one finished one more attack, but it was well, well wide. So in the end, I was quite glad to hold on to one all, despite having that frustrating goal against me, which was really undeserved. By the end of it, I was clinging on for dear life, uh, quite happy to take a one all draw. So uh, if, that, if that poor decision hadn't gone against me, things may have turned out differently. But uh, in the end, maybe a one all draw wasn't too bad. We were still very even in the stats by the end of the game. Our best rated player, Doherty in goal, pulling off that incredible save near the end to keep us in the game. Uh, but no one else was really that spectacular, so a one all draw was probably fair. Okay, up next we have a match against Middlesbrough, and although they are not far behind us, they're not actually in the qualification places. Uh, so I'm going to sim this game. Uh, so I can move on to other games more quickly. So let's see how we do against Middlesbrough in the championship. We want to get back to winning ways after that frustrating draw against Leeds. Uh, and no, we don't. We draw 0-0. Uh, Hayes gets sent off. So not a great result, but um, at least we didn't lose. So straight on to the next one, we have Sheffield Wednesday. They're in mid-table, so I'm going to sim this one as well. Moving uh, swiftly on to the game. 
afterwards. So let's see if we can get a win this time round. Yes, we can. We win 2-1 and Paulette gets both goals. So that's really good. Uh, good to see him scoring and uh, getting us the win. So straight after that match, we have two scouting reports from Lee and Demidov. First up, the one from Lee, and he is in Canada, and he has got uh, Dylan Oymet, uh, 64 to 86. Um, I don't think I'll be taking that player on. And then Kyle Aparicio, 51 to 69, definitely not taking him. Uh, so that's quite disappointing again in Canada. But now we have Demidov uh, in England, and David Langmead, 62 to 82, again, turning him down. Uh, Matt Worley, 51 to 69, definitely turning him down. And finally, the last one, uh, Tom Sawyer, 59 to 79, again, not very good. So that was a really bad month for uh, scouted players. And I thought we were getting quite a lot of draws, and this confirms it. It says that we've had five games without a win. So that was not a good run, but I'm pretty glad to get that out of the way. We finally managed to get a win, so let's see if we can keep that going. So next up we have Reading, and they are right near the foot of the table, so once again I'll be simming this one. We're doing pretty well, we're in third place, uh, only on goal difference as well behind Bolton, so hopefully with a win we can push up into that second automatic promotion spot and not have to worry about playing in the playoffs. Uh, but we get a one or draw, yet another draw, uh, a bit disappointing really, that was a good chance to move up the table, uh, so there you go, a one on draw. So next up we have Wigan in the league, uh, they're not in the promotion spot so I'm just going to sim this game and uh, once this game is over we will be in the January transfer window so I'm going to be looking around, see if I can find some interesting players to maybe bring in uh, if we can afford it but first we have this game and we drew one all, uh, Quinton getting a red card early on that was not good uh, but we got a draw, yet another draw, we seem to become the draw specialist now uh, but let's move on to the January transfer window. So given that it is the first of the month, we now have our uh, squad report. So we have Doherty on 76, and then Brown on 67. That plus four is just incredible. Uh, Liam Osborne on 63 plus one. Bovega on 65, he's also doing well, plus three points. Then we have Paddy Malloy on 59. Uh, Joe Hayes, 58. Um, Brad Knight still is not growing, this is just getting really frustrating really, I don't know why he's not growing, but he's not doing well this season. Uh, but on the other hand we have Sobby who is now on 68 and he is doing well, got some very nice stats in amongst there so he is at least growing nicely. Uh, then Quinton up to 70 at 18 years old, uh, plus 3 points, really nice to see that. Uh, James Smith on 61 and Frederick Mathis on 62, they seem to be a bit stuck as well. Uh, then after that we have Andrew Robson on 63, he is growing nicely. Uh, Darren Paul at 76 and uh, then of course the main man Kelvin Bong is on 70 so he's growing very nicely too. Uh, then we have Lodigan 65 and uh, Pender has now, uh, he is growing nicely too, he's on 70 points and uh, Abdel Hamid is up one now, he's on 66 so he's grown this month. Uh, very good finishing as well as dribbling so he should be scoring a few goals hopefully, a few more than he has got so far you would think. Uh, then uh, Dimitri Gurassi on 65, then we're on to the real players, so Alex Winter not growing at all but it doesn't matter too much because he is a pretty solid player for me. Uh, Jay Wallace on the other hand is up though, he is now up to 71, uh, one of my best players I think, uh, especially on the wing. Uh, then Dan Butler 64 and Danny East on 62, so that's the real players done and then we're out on loan. So Hickford uh, once more just not growing at all, completely stalled it seems. Um, Curtis Simpson 51, that early promise he doesn't seem to be growing a huge amount anymore, uh, although his physical stats are growing decent, so hopefully that'll, uh, that'll spur some more growth um, soon enough. Uh, Pimentel on 60, no surprise there, just hasn't grown at all. And then finally, Mitsuharu Polo Daniel on 64 plus 3, so that is the roundup of our players uh, this month and how they're growing. So a couple of decent points of growth, but a few players once again still stalled and just not growing at all. So I might look to loan them out or maybe even sell them. So I'm next to Bristol City and uh, we want to win because we're on the brink of falling out the playoff places. They're in the relegation zone, so there's an okay chance that we could get this win that we need to stay and move up the table. And yes, we win 1-0. Uh, Mathis gets the winner. Wallace was sent off, which is a bit annoying, but we got that win so we can keep moving up the table. So our next game is against Aston Villa in the Cup, but before that we have a scouting report available and it is the last one from the Netherlands. So we have Derek Pasveer, 53-71, uh, nope, and the last player from the Netherlands, uh, Robert van la Parra, 63-85. It's probably going to narrow down to around about 74 potential, so I just don't think that's good enough, so I'm going to turn that down. So unfortunately that trip to the Netherlands wasn't particularly great, uh, but we also have this message from Darren Paulet saying he'd like... Uh, a higher wage so uh, let's go and see what he's demanding so that is quite an increase up from 500 pounds to 15,000 uh, but the thing is with this guy he is one of my best players 76 overall and he's got six goals in 16 appearances 
So I think it is worth doing um, because he's not someone that I just want to let go of, especially now that we're in the transfer window. Uh, so I don't want him getting annoyed. So we will offer him that and hopefully he will accept. So that last scouting report now means that Murfin is available. Uh, so we will send him off somewhere. I did read in the comments that someone wants me to go to Uruguay for uh, my next scouting trip. So I think I will do that. Let's just send him over to Uruguay. Uh, we'll go for uh, probably six months. I think we have loads and loads of cash uh, floating around. Um, I'm not too bothered about what type of player we look for. Uh, at the end of the day, we have uh, pretty much all the bases fairly well covered. Although we were looking for wingers before and we haven't really found any good uh, fast wingers. So I think I will try that again. See if we can find any wingers um, to give us a bit more pace because we all know how slow scouted players are. So let's go to Uruguay for six months looking for a winner. A uh, winger, sorry. Hopefully we do get a winner. But uh, let's see who we can find. Okay, so our next game is Aston Villa in round three of the FA Cup. Let's give this uh, this game a go. I'm going to be playing it just to see if we can get a win. I'm not expecting to, to be honest, but it is a cup game. So you never know. Uh, upsets do happen. So let's see if we can get a win. Despite the Premier League opposition, we made a good start, the ball coming to Pender inside the box, beating his man and crossing the ball in towards Bong, who didn't manage to win the header but it was a decent effort. Shortly after we came again with Pender down the wing, beating his defender, crossing the ball in towards Bong once again, who this time won the header, it was a poor effort really, but under 10 minutes we'd had two attempts on goal, or two moves, so uh, we had made a fairly decent start, but Aston Villa aren't in the Premier League for no reason, they came out and had their own attack, parried well by Doherty. Uh, so it showed that they meant business, they weren't going to just roll over in this one. And look at this, apparently that wasn't a foul, but this was by my player. So getting hacked from behind, nothing, but look at this. Nope, I didn't see anything either. But apparently that was a foul, so the poor refereeing decisions continued. Had to put up with that one. Uh, but never mind, I decided to, tr to try a pot shot with Bong from distance and it almost came off uh, just wide. Look at the curl on that, a little bit further out and that may have just crept into the bottom corner. Uh, so a pot shot almost worked out for us there, uh, but then Lodigan got uh, completely clattered on the edge of the box. Uh, Paul at coming in with the shot, but this time he couldn't keep it down. Unlike um, last game when he managed to hit the crossbar, he couldn't keep that one on target. But we came in at half time, and apart from the possession, it was actually fairly even. I'd had quite a lot of good chances on goal. Hadn't managed to find a breakthrough, but I was keeping Aston Villa at bay, so I was quite happy with that, feeling fairly confident. Uh, then came out in the second half, Bong beating his defender. Uh, shot unfortunately straight at the keeper, but I kept the pressure on, uh, and I was doing fairly well. So I was pretty happy with that. But then some diabolical defending, I just could not get near him at all. And then Agbon Lahore just smashed it in at the near post, Doherty didn't even react. So that was fairly annoying. I felt I was doing okay, but I just could not get close to him then. Uh, and we ended up losing uh, losing the goal. Aston Villa almost hit me for two straight away, uh, just firing it wide. Uh, so by this point, they really started to get on top and assert their dominance. Another effort. Doherty was on top of it this time. But this half was all about Aston Villa. As, and... Uh, as this happened, my passing just fell apart. I could not uh, make the passes that I really needed to when I was going forward. And it was very frustrating because it just meant that I was giving the ball away uh, with 10 minutes to go when I really needed to go on the attack and try and find a goal from somewhere. I did try a long ball from distance, um, but that just wasn't working either. So my short and long passing uh, was just coming up with nothing. And then even in injury time, that happened and uh, it just sort of summed up my second half. So by the end of it, we are 1-0 down and we ended up losing the game. Uh, but 1-0 against the Premier League team isn't really a bad result at the end of the day. Uh, the second half was all about them, but we had a decent go at it. We could, um, we had a few chances where we could have got a goal, but in the end the performances just were not good enough and we probably deserved to lose. Okay, after that game we have this transfer offer for Mark Doherty and it is from Lille and they are offering £7.5 million. Now my chief executive says he is worth between 13.1 and 21.9 million pounds. That is a lot of money. 7.5 million pounds, nowhere near it. Um, I don't really, for a start, I don't think they're going to be able to stretch to 13 million at, at the minimum because uh, that's almost doubling their offer. And also, I don't really want to sell him because he is one of my best players. He is so key to the team and I haven't found any of the goalkeepers in the game who I would want to replace him with, um, youth goalkeepers that is, or regens. So I'm going to turn down this offer uh, and we will move on. So I'm just going to give you guys a reminder of the players in my youth academy. We have Danny Corrie, 44 to 46 overall, 75 to 81. Uh, a physically strong centre back, looking fairly decent there. Uh, next up, we have Keaton Nichols, 72 to 78 potential playmaker. Uh, Levesque Gonçalves, 71 to 75 
Uh, defensive minded fullback, so he is basically a centre back. But he's 6 foot 5, so he should be good in the air, hopefully. Uh, then Martin De Witt, 73 to 79, pretty much the only uh, decent player to come out of the Netherlands on that scouting trip. And uh, he's okay, I guess. Central midfield playmaker. Uh, then Michael Coyne, probably the one I'm most excited about, a physically strong uh, centre forward, uh, striker, sorry. 74 to 80 potential, so he's going to have around about 77 potential. That is very, very good indeed. Looking forward to seeing how good he is when he comes out of the academy. Uh, then Ryan Green. Uh, this is the other guy who I'm really, really looking forward to promoting. Six foot seven. Uh, probably going to be a central midfielder. 70 to 86 potential, looking really good and uh, very strong and good defensive by the look of it. So uh, he is going to be an excellent player when he gets promoted. Then finally, Shuttleworth for Tannen, 71 to 75 playmaker. Looks like his passing is going to be quite good as well uh, in the middle of midfield. So that is our uh, Youth Academy, how it is shaping up at the moment. Okay, that's all we've got time for today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, we are still early on in the transfer period. So if there are any areas of my team that you think need improving or any players you want me to get, uh, please do let me know in the comments below. I'll take a look at the, look at the comments and the, uh, the most popular comments uh, on where I should improve, what players to get, that kind of thing. Uh, I will uh, put into action, I'll have a look at and uh, see if I can find any players matching those descriptions. Uh, so next time we could be seeing some transfer activity perhaps, uh, if there are any uh, eligible players we can get. So uh, stay tuned for that. Uh, make sure you also enter the Scouting Gold Contest. This month it is on uh, best 16 year old players. So they can be any position uh, as long as they are 16 years old. So if you want to enter that, uh, you can take a picture of your best player uh, when they're either in the Youth Academy or just after they've been promoted so they haven't grown, uh, just to keep it fair. Um, so you can take that picture and send it to at FIFA Scouting on Twitter using the hashtag Scouting God, or uh, send it over to Facebook, which is facebook.com slash FIFA Scouting Tips. Or you can uh, leave a link to the image in the, in the uh, comments below, sorry. Or you can even send it to fifascoutingtips.com where I've got loads and loads of guides and uh, tutorials on career mode um, and scouting, all that kind of stuff. So make sure you check that out. Uh, so keep your comments coming. Please leave a like if you enjoyed this video as well. And thanks for watching.